So in the previous video, we looked at how the microtubules were arranged in the sperm tail. Again, we're trying to see how the sperm tail generate their sine wave-like motion. So we looked at the arrangement of the microtubules. We had nine outer doublets on the outside, and then two singlets in the center. But I told you the most action and where this generation of the force needed for the motion is coming from the outer doublets. Okay? So again, what we're going to look at now are how the microtubules interact with dynein. So remember, dynein is the minus end directed motor protein that interacts with neighboring microtubules and triggers a crossbridge-like cycle. So that's what we're going to look at right now is this crossbridge cycle. So in the presentation or from the lecture, we saw that this was done in a, as an experiment to show how dynein moves along microtubules. So the experimental setup is to take, for example, a sperm tail and strip it of the plasma membrane. When you strip the plasma membrane, remember you're going to use detergents, leaving you with the protein structure. The protein structure alone, minus the plasma membrane, is what we call the axonin. That's also what I called the structure before when we were looking at the arrangement of the outer doublets. We also called that an axonin. Okay? So it's just the cytoskeletal proteins. So here, what we're looking at then are just the proteins. And the proteins that we're interested in right now are the microtubules in green. And in between the microtubules is going to be the dynein, the minus end directed motor protein. And as you can see, the way this is arranged, you have a microtubule here with the minus end and the plus end here. Another microtubule set up next to it, so a neighboring microtubule also arranged minus to plus. So these are parallel, of similar polarity, and the dynein is anchored to one of these through their tails, so it's anchored to one of the microtubules, but the heads, which actually do the walking on the, are attached and will be walking on the neighboring microtubule, so the one up above. Okay? So this is before anything happens. Now, dynein, just like uh, myosin, utilizes ATP as its energy source to generate the motion, so to do the walking or go through this cross-bridge cycle. So now, if we add ATP to this system, the ATP is going to bind to the dynein, and again, the cross-bridge cycle is very similar to the way myosin works, so we're, but we're not concerned about that in detail. But just that once ATP is introduced into the system, it binds to the dynein, triggers the crossbridge cycle, and now what we're going to see is that when dynein, which walks towards the minus end of the microtubule, of the microtubule, it's going to go through a power stroke towards the end of the crossbridge cycle, and that power stroke is going to push the microtubule towards the plus direction. And that's what's illustrated right here in this picture. So the dynein is walking towards the minus end, but it pushes the microtubule that it's walking on in the plus direction. The other important thing to know about this experimental setup here is that they removed the nexin protein. Remember nexin, N-E-X-I-N, was the rubber band-like protein that's found in between neighboring doublets and it restricts the motion or how much force is produced on neighboring microtubules. So by removing the nexin and allowing this crossbridge cycle to occur between dynein and um, microtubules, what we see is this telescopic like motion. So basically this top microtubule is going to keep being extended because there's nothing there to restrict how far this microtubule can go. Because again, we remove the nexin. So this continues to keep going. So again, two neighboring microtubules 
you have your dynein in between and the dynein when it walks towards the minus end it causes one of the microtubules to go in the opposite direction so again before they're side by side they're parallel to each other dynein is anchored to the one below but it's walking on the microtubule above we add ATP to the system we trigger the cross bridge cycle now dynein walks towards the minus end but it will push at the power stroke the microtubule to the plus end so the bottom microtubule does not move in either case okay but the top one is the one that we're seeing that actually gets moved so again it's going to go to the minus and then push it towards the plus end. So this is how dynein interacts with microtubules. It's a minus end directed motor protein. So again, this is without the nexin. But in the sperm tail, we do have nexin. And this is what you see. <clears throat> so here we have an example here of how the microtubules are arranged. So again, if you looked at the sperm tail from the side view, so before, when we looked at the arrangement of the doublets and the singlets, we looked at it at a top side view. Now we're going to look at the side view of this microtubule structures. Okay? So here we have a pair of doublets. Okay? So an A and a B and an A and a B. Okay? And we have these dyneans in between. In part B, if you remove the nexin, then what you see is that one of these microtubules stay, remains where it is because the dynein is generating force on this second one here to the right. So without the nexin, this micro set of microtubules is going to get pushed up. Right? And notice that it keeps going up because there's nothing there to restrict how far it can go. But in part C here in this diagram, here, if we keep the nexin connection intact, then what we end up seeing is that when dynein triggers the cross bridge cycle, instead of moving very far or going up and down, it bends. So it causes a bending motion to occur. So without nexin, one microtubule remains where it is, the other one keeps going up. With Nexin, you're going to limit the motion. So when the cross bridge cycle is triggered with dynein and microtubules, it's going to cause a bending motion to occur rather than this telescopic straight up and down type of motion. And this is what generates the sine wave motion in sperm tail.